folks. Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Jordan was playing drums. Will Lee and, of course, Stephen Kahn. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, welcome back to the folks uh, show, folks. Um, <laughs> Monday, uh, we got a good program Monday. Warren Eckstein, who is an animal trainer. Also, George Miller and uh, actress Carrie Fisher uh, will be here. Uh, yep. Uh, and uh, in a few minutes, we're going to meet Mr. Ron Silver. My next guest started his career as a page right here in this building, and he has since been uh, the announcer on the Joy Bishop Show. He has also been the host of uh, a number of other programs, including AM Los Angeles, The Neighbors, and the Regis Philbin Show. He is currently the co-host of the morning show right here on WABC-TV in New York. Please welcome Mr. Regis Philbin. Regis! What a night this is, huh? That's a big Chinese night. adventures, horses, and Regis Philbin. Yeah, we... <laughs> We got it all. Yeah, first of all, let me uh, welcome you to New York. Let me Thank congratulate you. you on the success of the show. It looks terrific. Uh, you do a fine job over there. It's a very nice show. Thanks. I'm glad you liked And uh, now, let me ask you about some of these other programs, Regis. Uh, what was uh, The Neighbors? What was that? Well, sorry you brought that up. <laughs> the Neighbors was a game show that we did years ago on ABC. As I recall, we invited neighbors to come together and tell funny and unusual things about themselves. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, gossip, uh, oddball things about yeah. each other, yeah. Did that work uh, No, it didn't well? work at all. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how long, very how, quickly. How, was that on and oh, off? Oh, yeah, it was on and off. Yeah. Now, but you have done a whole host of different shows. It, if you had to pick a kind of show, what would you want to do? I mean, not that you're not doing it now, but... I'm still waiting for that one to come along. To tell you you think truth. so? Yeah. No, I kind of like what I'm doing now. Early in the morning, I think, is suited best for me. It's yeah. live. It's, uh, uh, we don't have any horses on. Incidentally, but when, you'd have a horse you on there, wouldn't you? When you ask that trainer, why does the horse breathe in his nose? Yeah. Dynamite question. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to remember that one. That was terrific. And he didn't know for a minute. No, there, he didn't really. know. No. He was, he was, you he had him. Yeah. <laughs> you had this guy. It was great. It was, a, it was a regular Mike Wallace type question, you know what I mean? <laughs> you zeroed in on it, you let him out. I was proud of you. Thank you very much. I, You're uh, good. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, now, on the... Uh, um... This is kind of awkward interviewing another host, isn't no, it? No, no. I, I tell you, I didn't want to come on because I've got nothing to say. <laughs> Honest to God, I said today on my own show, I'm on the David Letterman show tonight, and I don't have a thing to talk about. I've got no movie, I've got no book, I've got no crusade, I've got no Chinese inventor, I've got no horse, nothing. <laughs> really, it's going to be a tough for you to interview. Oh, no, no. We have, uh, we have plenty of uh, interesting well, things Well, I hope they're better you. than the first two, I'll tell you that. Now... Okay, here's... I'm not here's... used to seeing an audience. <laughs> no, you have an audience on your program. Yeah, a little audience. About 20 people wander in. <laughs> Keep out of the call. Nice it's, folks, it's though. It's different in the morning, David. It really is. Well, you know? I know. I've, I've... You can't get guests in the morning. No, no, don't say that, because you have... Uh, a fine lineup of guests. You do a very nice program, so knock that off and let's get on with this. Now, you're... Tough, um, tough tonight. Tough on the trainer and tough on me. Uh, Don't ask me why I breathe through my nose. Come on. <laughs> but on the program, one of the, one of the nice things about it is you're very relaxed. Very, very loose relaxed. on yeah. the show. Yeah, well, you are too. Well, it's different for me because I have the whole day to kind of worry about things, but you just... You want to know something? You're absolutely right. When I had afternoon shows or late night shows, uh, same thing. You'd worry about it all day. This way, you wake up in the morning, you get there at a quarter to nine, on at nine o'clock, and then you worry about what you said at ten, you know? <laughs> now, you get there a quarter of nine, how late would you stay? Well, I used to get there at a quarter to nine. Now, since this is a new show, I get there around 8.30. Oh, yeah. That, that extra 15... <laughs> Absolutely. In the long run, that Likes extra... Like to follow up on those tough questions. <laughs> That's you know? right. Uh, now, do you, uh, do you ever um, feel uptight or, or nervous about a guest? I, I can't imagine that happening with you. No. No, I really don't. Um, I can't think... What I don't like is being here now, because uh, I have nothing to say. But I... <laughs> I never get uptight about the show. I really don't. Well, yeah. you don't either, do you? Does oh, sure. anything ever shake you? Oh, like, yeah. Like what? Well, uh, on a day to day, it could be a whole host of things. Yeah, but being a guest, I think you'll agree with me, is tougher than being a host. Yeah, I found that to be true. Because the burden is on the guest to say funny things. Yeah, that's right. Why do I feel this burden getting heavier every minute? Now, uh, for, for folks who, who may not have seen Regis uh, in action, either on uh, this program or our other shows that he has done, we have uh, a sampling of a recent show on videotape here. 
Uh, Regis, tell America what they're going to see, and then uh, let's just sit back and enjoy it. Well, your intrepid staff uh, requested this. Uh, actually, you know, I, I'm not kidding. It is tough to get guests in the morning. One of them being Tom Jones. You know, Tom Jones is going to bed as I'm going to work, mm -hmm. so he's not going to come. So we go to him. So we decided to have lunch with Tom Jones in his suite. He's appearing here in New York, so we made a date, and um, as luck would have it, uh, we saw the, uh, the uh, waiter pushing down the tray to his room. So I said, now, wait a minute. Let's go in this, and let's push it together down the hallway. And that's what you're going to see. Now, this is what David Letterman's staff thinks is funny, you know? Um, <laughs> me and a waiter pushing a tray down a hallway at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Don't ask me, folks. I'm just the guest here. All right, that's, uh, that's it, and uh, that's a sample of the kind of thing you'd uh, see on Regis's program, who is co-hosted, which is co-hosted by Cindy Garvey. Cindy. Yeah, Tom Jones. Well, the big is... What's the big, big deal? Son. What is the big deal with Tom Jones? I can do what he does. What's new, pussycat? <laughs> What's new, pussycat? Do you like that or not? Stop. Walter, wait a minute, stop it. Do you like me singing or not? Oh, what's new, pussycat? Does it sound like him or not? It does. What can he do? Anybody can do it, Walter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Delilah. Look at this guy. What's that other song he does? Do I have a Walter or not? That sounds terrific for me. Tell him, I like Regis. I will. Okay. You couldn't name your job, but what are you? Yeah. What's new, pussycat? Wabba, wabba, wo! Da, wo, da, wo! Wo, wo! Is this it? This is it, now. Don't be afraid. Of course not. Nobody here. Don't be scared, boy. Run service. What's new, pussycat? What's new, pussycat? All right, Tom. Yes. Walter has brought the food in. Okay. And I was singing for him in the hole. Oh, Walter yes. loved me. Walter, tell him how much you like me. Oh, well, uh, so much. Was it good? Walter, tell him what you said out in the hallway, that you like me better. Just a wonderful word about Just serve the food. <laughs> he was a good sport. Man. Yeah, he was. Very nice funny. Man. Very nice. Uh, we're going to stay right there. We're going to come back and we'll talk more I about the uh, multi-talented Regis Philbin. Uh, Philbin is here, uh, the ebullient uh, Regis Philbin. Now, you were singing uh, in the, uh, was it the Waldorf? Singing, yes. What's new pussy? Yeah, that's uh, pretty... He was a nice sport, that uh, yeah, Waldorf. Yeah, that was a, a nice little piece, but of course... Uh, and oh, now, now no, I know. No, no. No, no, you've seen it before. Yes. Well, uh, this, of course, uh, is uh, the album that... Uh, it's, it's time for Regis, and when was this made, Regis? Uh, about 1968. 68. And we're going to listen to a little bit Are you now. kidding no. me? Oh. No. <laughs> what are they? No, they're, they're, they're not booing. They're simply they chanting, Regis. Oh, Regis. I like that. That's a lot nice. of people... It's the it's same good. thing like we do that. for Lou Pinella. Now... But I've got nothing to talk about. No, we're going to listen now to uh, uh, a, a oh, cut oh, how called A Kiss to Build a Dream On. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Regis. Oh, no. Let's listen now, shall we? Give me a kiss to build a dream on, and my imagination will thrive upon that kiss. Sweetheart, I ask no more than this. That's a kiss to build a dream. A kiss to build a dream. That was... How about a... How about a little bit of Swanee? No, we didn't. We didn't get Swanee on well, there. But, well, a kiss Swanee's to build good. a yeah, but a kiss to build a dream on was the, no, was the single better. that really broke off the album. You'd like uh, to hear Swanee, wouldn't you, gang? They want Swanee. We don't. We don't have Swanee. You don't have Swanee. We don't have Swanee. Swanee, we, it's on the album. It's on the album, but we 
see, here's the record in here, and we had to put it on uh, audio tape, so we only got uh, a You know how I made that out? It's so funny that people spend all of their lives training and rehearsing and wanting to be a singer. Yeah. And one night on the Joey Bishop show, Bing Crosby was a guest on the show, and he sat right over here. Do you want to hear the story or not? I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> And anyway, um, he wanted Bing to sing. In fact, here's Bing's picture. That's the night it happened. So anyway, he wanted Bing to sing a song, but everybody was afraid to ask him because they were paying him scale. So on the show, he said to Bing, and he knew I was a Bing, Big Crosby fan. He said, Bing, it'd be the biggest thrill in this kid's life if he could sing Pennies from Heaven to you. What he meant to say was, if you could sing Pennies from Heaven to him. Right. But it came out the other way. Yeah. So Bing Crosby turns, and he looks at me, you know, with those blue eyes, and uh, the band started saying, read just, read, no. The band started applauding, and Johnny Mann, who didn't, who never knew what was going on anyway, said, did he say pennies from heaven? Hit it! And they, and they yeah. played it, and what are you gonna do? Yep. So I sang, and the next day I got a record contract from Mercury Records. I'll show you how crazy this business is. Now, did you move any of these? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you got the only copy. Now we, now, we saw another picture on the back of the album earlier, and I want you to tell me what's going on there, Regis. You and Joey, and Sammy Davis Jr. What is what is happening well, you here? you remember the Nehru suit craze back in 1968? Right. Yeah, Sammy Davis was coming on the show, so uh, Joey and I walked up Vine Street and went into Cy or someplace, <laughs> and we picked up a couple of those snazzy Nehru suits. Uh -huh. I still have mine. Do you have yours? No, I never I never had one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember the 60s or the hippie era and all oh, that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was my contribution to the era. Now, you were actually a page in this building, weren't you? Right here. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, on the eighth floor, I guess, where those great dramatic shows were happening, Philco and Robin Montgomery Presents, and that was the beginning of it for me. Yeah, do you remember anything about the paging? Yes, I remember one time, June Lockhart, well, I remember one time I was sitting, the first night on the, on the show, and I'm sitting up there on Sunday night, and the door opened, and out came this uh, little gorilla on, uh, on a bicycle. <laughs> So I was new on the job, I didn't know what to expect, and this gorilla starts coming faster and faster down the hallway, top speed, and I became alarmed. And just before the gorilla got to my desk, he jumped off the bike, and the bike crashed into my desk. And the gorilla laughed like crazy. <laughs> it was J. Fred Muggs. You remember the oh, gorilla sure. that they had From on the, the, uh, the Today Show? Right. Yeah, right. so anyway, that was his big... Uh, I'll never forget that, because he scared the hell out of yeah. me. But uh, what we'll... were your responsibilities as a page? I'll tell you, to come up with the key, and tonight the page gave me my key to the dressing room. Yeah. Incidentally, your dressing rooms are a little small. They're tiny, yeah. yeah. Cardinal Mincenti had a bigger cell from the Russians. Here's the key. <laughs> but the night I was there, June Lockhart came, and she wanted her key to the dressing room, and I couldn't find it, yeah. and I just felt terrible. And that's... Uh... That's the only thing I remember from being a That's page. all you need to remember, yeah. Regis. Continue. Nothing to talk about. Is that it? Is this the big brush? No, we're done. No, I'm not, just no, 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 wait a minute. Let me just, let me, let me say thank you very much. Continued success on your Is own. Is this goodbye? Uh, no, it's not goodbye. You're just, you're just done for <laughs> Do you really want me to leave? You have to leave now, Regis. Thank Regis you. Philbin, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Uh,